sky. Stories to give. The ones who make it there and can make it back. Salutations and shit, folks. Welcome, welcome, welcome to a new episode of Travel and Shit Podcast, where I, your host, D. Carrie, have an experiential conversation about the nuanced ways that travel intersects with regular life. Happy Thanksgiving, guys. So um, if you haven't guessed by now, uh, I am going to do a thankful, grateful episode. I have been having a a time with this whole car process and in those Wusa moments, I am still reminded that I have so much to be uh, thankful for and grateful for, especially as it comes to uh, the year in review. We're still in what is the uh, throes of a pandemic. Um, It's not as bad as it started. However, it is still pretty rough. A lot of us are now coming into holidays without loved ones um, or while still unable to safely or comfortably visit some of their families due to whatever, you know, varying levels of health and comfortability traveling, whether it's financial strain and, you know, you're just unable to get where you want to be. So my heart is absolutely with anybody that is experiencing any hardship during the holidays. Um, And, you know, just a little bit of positive energy always being sent you guys this way just because I'm thankful for you. It's very reaffirming and re um, rewarding to consistently see the numbers growing. So I thank you for talking to your friends about the podcast. I thank you for bringing my name up in rooms where I am not. I appreciate you guys for returning and I'm thankful and grateful for you guys coming back and fucking with me every week. Um, I really just enjoy running my mouth and I enjoy that you enjoy it as well. So there's always a level of positive energy going you guys' way because I've always appreciated you guys. But um, sending that extra care bear stare level of warmth your way uh, because I know the holidays can be really difficult and I'm hoping that you're able to um, really find some joy and enjoy it to the best of your capabilities. Uh, So over the week I have been posting on Instagram uh, about well at least sharing some photos of some of the things that I have been building up to um, talking about today and uh, for the first one that I'll bring up is friends on trips. So over the past year, turns out boyfriend and I have, and that's another episode I'm going to do um, soon. I'm still figuring out and thinking through how I want to do it, but um, feel free to throw me any suggestions that you have. But I want to do a solo travel versus now couple uh, travel. Um, I've never had a partner to travel consistently with. And so this whole having a boyfriend and traveling together is a uh, new territory and it hasn't been difficult at all, which I'm more than pleased about, but uh, there's some things that are very different and I'm trying to decide how I want to uh, produce that episode, what I want it to look like. So if you have any suggestions, I'll, um, I would love to see what they are and to see if they align with any, any of the ideas that I've had. But um, that being said, we've been able to cover a lot of ground. And on those trips, we have also been able to cover um, both of our friend groups, which has been insane. So I've been able to meet um, quite a few of his super, super close friends. And he's been able to meet um, some of my friends as well. So we did, shout out to Shira a black girl world traveler, we were able to break bread in Philly. I want to say Philly was June, June or no, no, no. It was May. It was right after boyfriend's birthday. I want to say it was the week after his birthday. So that puts it, uh, (sighs) sometime around maybe like the twenties, that general area of May. But We went in May and I remember because I ended up booking the um, no reservations style walking tour Uh, that comes up in one of the other uh, parts that I'm grateful for. But 
Philly was in May and we had an incredible time. I was able to hang out with Shira, Black Girl World Traveler, who was a guest on the show. And I was also able to link up with my boy, Drew. Uh, we call him Chef Drew in our friend group. And um, it was really nice to be able to see my friend because he lives in Philly, but he's always in New York for whatever uh, group events we have. Like whenever I hang with Drew, it's always on my turf. It's always in my city. So it was nice to be able to break bread uh, with my friend in his town. So that was nice. And it was also just good to see him because I hadn't seen him in easily, uh, oof, maybe it might've been longer than a year since the last time I'd seen him. Um, and it was also the first time that I got to meet Shira in person. So those are really dope trips. Uh, well that trip in particular was really do- dope for that reason. I also got to meet Danielle Hodge of Alma Ocean. It turns out that Facebook came through with that alley oop. I was on Facebook for whatever reason, and I saw that the um, the tour that she manages was in Dallas at the same time we were in Dallas. So I hit her up like, "Since you in Dallas?" And she was like, "What we doing?" And we ended up getting the best VIP treatment. Um, and it was such a joy to be able to meet Danielle in person because as soon as we like virtually met click like we're homies now like now we're friends and so it was so rewarding to be able to see her in real life that was a lot of fun um so that was another really high of all the travels that we've done through the years uh being able to meet the two guests that turned friends on the um from the podcast so i've been able to um connect with such incredible people and have such really really um like i am truly interested in everybody that I talk to on the show. There is something about everybody that I have a conversation with that intrigues me and interests me. So not only is it like informative for me to be able to speak with everybody, but it's also like a peek into my interests and a peek into the way that I think about things and the different um, areas that I am curious about. So it's been such a rewarding experience to be able to host the show and to talk to so many different people about so many different things. Cause like, I enjoy honestly talking about travel and being able to have these different conversations is quite fulfilling for me. Um, who else did I have? Shara, Danielle, Drew, um, of course, hanging out with my best friend. I've seen Dell quite a few times this year and she generally comes back to New York um, to handle a lot of family biz, uh, business and stuff that she's got going on in New York. And it was nice to be able to not just see her, but to also surprise her for her uh, birthday. Uh, we got there the week before her birthday, so it was even more of a surprise, but it just was so um, meaningful for us to be able to spend this time together um, in this way where there was nothing that we had to do. We just got to hang out together. It wasn't like she was here and she had to run these errands or it wasn't like, you know, I was there and I had committed to doing something else while I was in that space. I was there specifically for her. So that was perfect for us to be able to um, have our time together. And uh, on the other side, in Dallas, we were able to visit boyfriends. Two of his best friends live out there. And so I got to meet them. I also got to meet... um, Mark's girlfriend, Nicole, who was a gem, love Nicole. Um, And it was really nice to hang out with um, boyfriend's friends who are also like, I couldn't have asked for a better set of friends for my boyfriend just because like now I enjoy being friends with them. So it's kind of like, you know how you have like a friend of a friend and it's just like, okay, yeah, well, they're cool. They're cool for, you know, going out or they're great at the bar. But then when you try to sit and talk to them over food, like they're mad dry Or, you know, they're the kind of friends that you pull up to do like real serious conversation, but you can't really do anything fun with them because they're very kind of stush or they're very, um, I don't know, just like stuffy and very academic, if you will. Across the board, such an incredibly dynamic friend group. And so I couldn't have been happier to have uh, spent some of my time traveling uh, to connect with them along the way. So 
Shout out to boyfriends, friends. Y'all are real ones. Love you all. And I can't wait for us all to link up again. Let's see. I am also thankful for safe travels. It's one of those things where you're always grateful to arrive safely. And it's just like, oh, thank God. Traveling mercies. We made it here. Um, but especially after the lace, the lace, the recent, uh, bout of car issues, I am exceptionally grateful that even when things go wrong or even when they go bad, they don't go as wrong as they could go. They don't go as bad as it could be. Right. So with, um, we did a lot of driving this year. We did a whole lot of driving. Um, a little bit over a year ago, we did a six hour drive to Vermont safely. So we made it there and back. Um, we made it to Philly and back. We made it to, uh, Connecticut and back. Now granted Philly and Connecticut aren't ridiculously far. I want to say Hartford was maybe two hours, uh, from where we are. And I think Philly might've been like three hours, maybe four hours. Uh, all that of course varies depending on traffic, but there are plenty of people that live in Philly and work in New York or that live in Connecticut and work in New York. So it's not like it's, um, but personally I hate driving. I have no interest in driving at all. I will say though, I bet you a bitch will be driving when, uh, this car finally comes around and I get everything in order because new car, who does? So I'm a little excited for that. And I'll probably enjoy driving just in until I get used to the new car and break her in and figure out all the little extra things that it does. <laughs> Exciting. But um, safe travels, flights, we did a substantial amount of flying and being so close to so many people and, you know, people from everywhere, people from all varying um, beliefs of how real or not the vid is. So uh, we kept we kept safe. We made it safely. Neither one of us, um, you know, came down with COVID at all. Thankfully, uh, thank God, uh, that wasn't an issue at all. Let's see. And we didn't have any issues with delays. We didn't have any canceled flights. That's another big thing. I was very grateful because this was around the time that, uh, Southwest was, we weren't, we didn't fly Southwest at all, but with the whole pilot shortage, um, speaking of there was a pilot, I think it was the last pilot. Uh, what was the last flight we took? (laughs) We flew home from Cincinnati. The pilot looked like he had just graduated high school. Like he got his aviation license from like a high school program. Like I looked in this young man's eyes and he looked a smooth 17. I kid you not. Like he had just gotten his regular driving license, but it was like a tandem program where he was able to also get like his aviation license. Like he's the kind of kid that grows up out West Midwest someplace and just grows up flying planes with his family because they just have planes or something so that he ends up being able to get his actual commercial pilot's license, like super early. I don't know. Um, actually that's one of the things that I'm low key working on is trying to get an actual, uh, actual, I'm trying to get a pilot, whether they be, um, a commercial airline pilot or there's another, uh, potential guest that I have my eye on that I don't believe is a commercial pilot, but a first in another, um, aviation milestone. But all that to be said, pilot shortage, um, the one that we just recently had looked very, very young. Uh, excuse me, but shorty got us here safely. So I'm happy about that. Regardless of how young, whether he, you know, video game learned how to drive, it worked. But through all of the hiccups and headaches and, you know, the different collective concerns and issues that air travel has been, we had a relatively pleasant and, um, decent experience. We only did domestic travel because my, uh, passport expired probably, I don't know. It might've been over a year ago. I don't even remember at this point, but that's something I'm going to work on. Uh, that being said, I could only do domestic flying. 
So we didn't do any international. We didn't have to go anywhere where we needed to space out the COVID results in like that seven, 72 hour window. We're both vaccinated. So, um, you know, we didn't have that additional group of steps to be um, added to the burden of figuring out uh, airline travel during this, you know, still pandemic. Like we're not seeing middle seat blockages anymore. We're not seeing pandemic flight prices where, you know, you could get anywhere for, you know, really ridiculous prices like Europe to Europe prices. It looked like in some places, but, um, that being said, we made it safely. And I think travel or reaching one's destination is one of those, uh, silent things that we're grateful for. Grateful for, we tend to highlight, um, wow, I'm really grateful for this really good food or this really great experience or, oh my God, look at this price I paid for X, whether it be a service or a good, but those things we, um, very joyous, joyously, uh, joy, why do I want to push joyously? Why do I joyfully want to, um, there's my dad. I don't want to, uh, joyfully show gratitude for, and there's nothing wrong with showing, you know, audible or, you know, vocal gratitude for, I'm so glad I was fortunate enough to be able to pay for this trip or this experience or, you know, this accommodation on whatever trip or, um, vacation that you have. But I think that getting one place point A to B, whether it be an Uber ride, whether it be a train ride, a plane ride, whatever. One of those things that I think I want to, uh, spend a little bit more time highlighting, um, we also, I forgot where it was. One of the things driving through areas where, you know, you are not sure whether or not you are going to be safe. I'm a black woman. My man is a man of color. I don't know that, you know, everywhere down South is going to welcome us. Like I mentioned before, seen a lot of Confederate flags flying and, um, you know, pulling over to get gas. I don't know about you, but I tend to notice, not all the time, but when I do notice someone looking at me, I try not to take it personal. But when I notice someone staring at me, now my antenna are up. Like, so what about me are you fixated on? Is it being attractive? Okay, look at me. But then just like consistently staring at me. And it's just like, I don't know what your intentions are. I don't know what your thought process is while you are making this, uh, level of connection. And I'm uncomfortable at this point. So things like that in the South aren't fun to experience and, uh, traveling through spaces and experience like that. I am grateful for making it to the next destination. Um, things like keeping your luggage with you, people not losing your shit when you have to gate check. Sometimes you're on a small, a smaller aircraft that doesn't have as much, as much air, not air, uh, overhead space. So they have you gate check because I don't believe in checked luggage. I don't really bring anything with me that I need to have on person. Thankfully, I don't have any medical needs or any other type of necessity that requires me to check check luggage. Um, I am able to, you know, condense everything into a carry-on. That being said, sometimes you just still get caught at the gate and they say, "Uh, uh, uh, you shall not pass. And they take your shit. Hasn't gotten lost. My luggage has gotten dinged up, but it hasn't been severely damaged or anything of the sort. Um, I haven't had anything stolen. So like overall, like my safety in the travels has been one of those things that I am very grateful for, especially considering, um, Sorry, especially considering, you know, it could have gone any other way. When the engine crapped out in Cincinnati, we were able to make it to a safe parking spot. It didn't go out in the middle of the night on a five lane highway someplace. That would have been fucking terrifying to have your car engine just die in the middle of a road where people are going on average 90 miles 80 miles 
depending on, you know, what area it is, like those really wide highways in the middle of nowhere where the speed limit is posted at like 70, 75. You know what I mean? I'm grateful that it didn't happen there. I'm grateful that it didn't happen on any road. You know, it never got to the point where we couldn't drive the vehicle. So it, you know, it could have been way worse. There could have been an accident, whether it be in any city. Um, Our rentals were safe. I know that there are people that have had terrifying experiences renting from certain rental companies um, where they have been pulled over and accused of stealing the car. Um, you know, so I was very adamant about not renting from Hertz because of those alleged complaints that, um, people were really having really negative interactions with the police based on the company, the rental company, not, um, allegedly <clears throat> don't come for me. Cause I ain't got it. Um, around them allegedly not completing the paperwork or whatever processes or submitting one set of paperwork while telling the consumer that something else was done. So a lot of people got kind of accused of stealing the vehicles and interactions with police don't go well for people in different ways for various reasons. Um, So that is absolutely something I'm happy that we weren't uh, victim to. So we've had, you know, a terrible experience in terms of pricing. The rental in Dallas ran me, I think like $700. And then they held like another $200 on the card. Just like after I paid you 650, you still got a whole 200, $250. Cool. Um, I don't need to eat, you know, just whole budget on a rental. But all that being said, I'm grateful for safe passage. I am grateful that there were no accidents on all the road trips that we did. I'm grateful that we didn't have to deal with any flight delays. Um, I think one one flight was delayed like 30 minutes. Basic shit. Like they just needed longer to clean the plane. There, there were no mechanical issues. That I think actually they were waiting on a part in one instance, but it went well. It went swimmingly. We were safe and I'm grateful for that. Uh, Another thing I am grateful for are the new experiences that I got to have. I've had a great fucking year. I'd never been to a huge ass adult bouncy house. That was really kick ass. I have never had such an incredible um, two actually culinary experiences. Um, Miami boyfriend picked out the most incredible restaurants. We were treated like royalty at most of these places. I cannot get over how like much Miami made me feel like a fucking socialite, if that makes sense. Um, I want to say it wasn't Biblos, but it was Mao. I think it was, I think the place was called Mao where, um, I think it's M-A-O. And then it's got like the, uh, the dash or the long O sound that, you know, that point the line over the o like in tau anyway the chef came over made friends with boyfriend the two of them exchanged numbers and ended up talking later um comped us for part of the meal like we got a really significant discount on the bill we ended up um getting like a round of drinks it it was such like a we are absolute nobodies but i think i thank you for treating us like somebody's um even at, uh, big blows, like the service was incredible and the food was so like, I had the fanciest fucking bur- uh, breakfast that I've ever had in my life. Y'all talk about like, you know, Twitter has like the $200 date. It was like a $200 breakfast. How do you spend $200 on breakfast? But shout out to boyfriend. He did. And it was so fucking good. Even just the surrounding the area, like, and that's not even some shit that you do often, but it's like, an experience, you know what I mean? It was just the, in the, the restaurant space was like the pool house, if you will. It was like in the pool house. Cause then like the pool was right on the other side of the enclosure. It's like one of those spaces where the, well, the walls are like the glass has like sliding doors on both ends. And one end connects to the hotel, like a larger eating area. And this was like the outdoor, like a lanai kind of thing, like right before the pool. So dope, so dope. And the staff was 
very five star establishment, you look to the side and someone is coming to you with like a towel over the arm. Like, did you need something? It's just like, no, nah, I was just looking at her sneakers, but you know, appreciate it. You know, such a cool experience. Like I'd never had, um, that tip top of a, like every day, even takeout we had was fucking nuts. So good. So, 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 so good. We ended up getting sushi and then we ended up getting like wings take out the time that we were there. Um, even in Hartford, the food in Hartford was so good. We did, I think, except for the hotel, I want to say it was all black owned. No, we went to where I got that mac and cheese. Highly doubt that was black owned, but that shit was so good. That was so good. And I'm actually recording this on Thanksgiving. So I'm so excited to go get my mama's mac and cheese. I had to tap out on making the mac and cheese this year because today's actually the first day I've had off in two weeks. Um, I worked over the weekend. A bitch is tired. But um, yeah, new car. Just bring that money in, right? Um, that being said, I... Um, <sighs> I loved the food in Hartford. We got some really good, ooh, Vermont doesn't necessarily count for this year because I'm thinking like calendar day to calendar day, Thanksgiving to Thanksgiving, but we did Vermont early November last year. I love cheese. I really do love cheese. And when I tell you that man made some of the best cheese boards, um, also I had his bacon fried brownies the first time. Like, I feel like I just let a secret out and now everybody's gonna get this, but you know what? If y'all fuck with me and you're listening to the podcast, you deserve that in your life. Because when I tell you bacon fried brownie, bacon fried brownies are so good. You're welcome. Fry up some bacon and then warm your brownies in that bacon grease. That's how you make bacon fried brownies. So good. I never made them myself. I don't go in the the kitchen anymore. That is his room. I mind my business. I eat the foods though and delightful. So what else did I have here as, um, oh, horseback riding. Oh, I was talking about the food in Hartford. Also, um, that was from Vermont, but horseback riding in Hartford was so, so much fun. That was a great, I can't say I've had, that was one of the most fulfilling experiences in the year because it was black owned, it was black owned. And to be able to connect that way with the animals and to have that long of an experience. And it was such a new experience because I'd never, you know, brushed a horse. I'd never cleaned a horseshoe. I'd never hosed down a horse and brought the horse to its stall kind of thing. You know what I mean? So I'd never had that um, level of connectivity and closeness with such a big ass animal. Um, domesticated or not, then it could still fuck me up. So it was a a space of uh, respecting his power while also still trying to be like a, you know, dominant person and uh, take care of business Um, or, you know, maintain that level of authority that the animal actually listens to what it is you say you, you want it to do and not just throw you fuck off and break your neck. So balance. So that was a really good experience. And then also just being able to see my little cousin I don't know if that was his first uh, performance out of New York. I doubt that because he, I think he goes to school in DC. Um, but that was the first time I'd seen him live and to be able to have such a kick-ass experience surrounding it. And he did so well. I was so proud of him and also just so happy to see him. I hadn't seen him in easily since pre COVID and seeing him now as an adult, as opposed to, cause y'all know how much growth there is between like your late teens and like your early twenties. So it's like being able to seeing him in passing and then being able to like see him as him as a performer. And then him as a young adult was my heart. Y'all just such, such a beautiful time. So that was really important to me. Um, the ease of Puerto Rico. When we stayed in Puerto Rico, we really just tapped in with what you feel like doing. Miami was quite similar as well, mostly because Miami was hot as fuck. Like it was too hot to go outside during the day. But Puerto Rico, we just walked around when we felt like walking around. We hung around inside watching Golden Girls when we felt like hanging around inside. Um, we did a little bit of venturing around the immediate space that we were in. We spent a lot of time just sitting on that balcony, um, drinking coffee, 
having some of our food outside. Uh, mostly breakfast was outside. Like the, the balcony was more of like a morning kind of thing. And then uh, I think we went out one night and just had drinks and like looked at the stars and, you know, get a feel for what the, um, the neighborhood and the community was like at night. And then we also um, really uh, hit it off with the, um, the guy that owned the, 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 the liquor store. I hate liquor store just sounds so on the block. This was a very upscale, um, it's not a distillery or a dispensary, but it was a very, very nice shop, like wood shelving, uh, molding all around huge, uh, communal table in a nice little cutout space with like beautiful, dis uh, display bottles around, uh, like a little tapas table where you just sit, break bread with, um, friends and people that come in and visit. So it was at, it, it, gorgeous. And this was all in the back of like a metaphysical shop, not, ex not your traditional one. Cause it had more like uh, trinkets and, you know, more souvenir -y kind of things, but there were plants, there were, um, crystals, uh, candles, you know, necklaces and all that kind of stuff. So that being able to, um, link up with the shop owner and talk with him. I got some really dope items and I actually have some place to wear the outfit that I bought out there, which I'm quite excited about. We're going to a friend's miss next month that I am very excited to go see. Um, so shout out to Bart and Nell for that. Excited to see you guys. And Chef Drew is catering the event as well. So it'll be nice to be amongst my friends and also for boyfriend to meet more of my friends and especially this friend group in particular. Um, and I guess that makes it a good segue into the final thing on my list that I am thankful for. Um, while also, let me just throw this last one in. I was also really grateful for my first like couple trip. So Wynn and Fanny, um, my one of my boyfriend's best friend, Wynn, who is an incredible rapper, by the way, from the Bronx. Check him out. He's W-I-N underscore. I think he's W-I-N period underscore. If you just put Wynn into Instagram, check him, check him out, check his music out wild talented. So one of boyfriend's best friends. And so he and his wife, Fanny came out to, um, Brigantine with us. And Brigantine was a time because of the familiar, familial nostalgia for me. It was the first time I had gone back since I was a kid. And it was also about two years after my grandfather had passed away and we always went with my grandparents. So it was, a bit heavy a time that I didn't necessarily expect to be as heavy, but, um, it was nice to have that balanced out with friends that I love very much come out and be the first couple trip that I got to experience. It was right on the beach. We were able to head out to Atlantic city. We were still celebrating my birthday. Um, when and Fanny made brownies, but when did a little razzle dazzle and added pretzels because I'm a savory girl. I am salty and savory and I can appreciate them holding on to that nugget of information about me and making it um, salty and savory for me. And for boyfriend having the foresight, but well, not the foresight because they had planned it together for him to pick up bacon so that we could do bacon fried brownies as my birthday cake. So I really and truly hold that experience very dear to my heart. And so that leads into the final segue of another thing that I am grateful for is an incredible partner. So boyfriend is the bee's knees and I am very, um, how is the best way to put it? So I did all of my traveling solo before. So I'd carry my own bags unless there was, you know, like an attendant or someone that was at the accommodation that I was visiting, like my host, uh, in Bali carried all of my shit. Thank God. Because it was like, I was showing boyfriend videos, uh, this morning. There's like a foot and a half, two feet worth of walking space in utter darkness and then rice field right on the side. So it was terrifying, especially the first time I'm walking up. My host is just using his cell phone light and then just holding my heavy ass carry on over his shoulder because there's no space to roll it because it's all rocks and grass. That being said, it's nice to have someone that is there to help with, you know, a lot of the travels. It's nice that, you know, instead of paying for, you know, everything myself, 
I've got help. I've got someone that, you know, all right, I'll figure out the trip and you feed me everything that you know, when we're there, I don't touch my wallet. You know what I mean? Like even in the road trips driving, I don't have to pump my own gas. I don't have to, you know, um, be the one that is rolling down the window to ask the, t- the attendant or something for directions. I don't have to be terrified of going through deer crossing by myself. I know that sounds really ridiculous, but that last drive that we had, there were so many deer on the side of the road. That's because deer crossing is actually a thing. Even if you never see a deer cross the road, that doesn't mean that they don't. And the bitches are strong. Okay. I didn't know until he told me in Vermont, if you're driving on the road and you see a deer and you don't have enough time to stop, you can't slow down because you're more likely to die than the deer. Like the deer's fucked up. He's going to be a goner. Your best bet is to just plow through it as terrible, terrible as it sounds. Your safest bet is to plow through it so that he doesn't just plow into your windshield and kill you. Uh, that terrified me. And then seeing all those deer on the road, like not having to navigate, you know, road trips alone, being able to do more road trips because I know I have somebody that's, let's be honest, he does most of the driving, but, um, we can go further now because I don't have to worry about, uh, doing a nine hour trip by myself. Um, I don't have to worry about what time I come back from an event or a bar or something because I know that I'm safe with him. Um, in terms of wanting to try or, um, you know, go different places, I don't have to worry about, you know, that whole, where's my drink? Let me wear this kind of pocketbook. Um, I can't go at this hour or I can't wear this kind of bathing suit or I can't wear this kind of outfit because it's just me by myself. Like I can, I'm always myself, but I feel like in so many more instances, I feel like I am more supported in being myself. Like I am safer being myself because I know that regardless of how that is perceived in certain areas, not saying that I'm reckless in different spaces because I know he got my back because that's not who I am, but I don't have to ever worry about, well, in this area, do they perceive black women a certain way? In this area, are women perceived, period, a certain way here? And me being here as a solo woman is going to be like, now everybody's radar is on me. I don't have to worry about those things now because- I have someone with me. Um, he just makes my regular life easier. He does all the cooking. He is incredibly supportive. Um, and it also feels good to have somebody to share in really beautiful views in like, you know, when I want to get lost in looking at the, at the stars at night, I'm, I can look up and enjoy the clouds because he's there to keep me safe, you know, based on all the shit that's going on around me. Like I just have someone that I care very much about, care very much about me and get to share in all of these incredible experiences in the gratitude of safe travels and in the gratitude of having incredible friends and also expanding that network of friends that we get to see all over the country and soon all over the world because I'm gonna get my password shit around, you know, I'm gonna get that together. But it is very... um I'm very fortunate and I'm very grateful not just to have a partner because it's not about just having a partner. Um, It's about having a good partner and uh, the right partner for you. And I am grateful that I have that. So that will conclude today's gratitude episode because I waited till mid afternoon to record this and I'm about to go eat. Um, I hope you all are finding joy in the holidays And I hope that you are able to think back on, you know, a lot of your um, holiday experiences and a a lot of your actual travel experiences and seeing how being able to navigate those difficult times and being able to navigate those new experiences hopefully can be empowering for you in navigating new and difficult experiences in regular life. If you're able to figure it out in another country in a different language with a whole new group of people surrounding you, consider the luxury of using those now 
stretched and flexed muscles um, back home and using your travel gratitudes to further add to the list of things that you have to be grateful for this year. And also to remind yourself to be more grateful for those things, you know, how can I put it with, you know, more frequency and not making it a, I'm going to think about it, uh, next holiday or next birthday. Just is, there's nothing wrong. Like you don't have to make a big episode. See what I did there about it, but just reflecting on some of the things I know for me, when I'm having a particularly, uh, anxious space that I'm in mentally, I try to really just be grateful for the, the moment in itself and remind myself that I'm generally, my mom will remind me you're stressing something that hasn't happened. Like let it happen. Um, so that being said, I am also grateful for the current moment and, uh, you know, I can more easily like sit in that space because I am reminded of all of those travels that I've taken and how I've been able to enjoy them so much more when I am present in that space. That's another one of the things because travel is so much more than vacation. I try to be present in a lot of those moments. And I find that I've been able to very much so, you know, keep them with me and to live in them more impactfully and more resolutely when I am just, let me take a minute and just take this in for myself in this moment. And those experiences, I do very much so hold on to me when I am struggling with certain things in regular life. And when I'm looking for motivation to just be like, okay, one thing at a time. All right. So thank you for listening. Again, I'm grateful for you and I will see you all next week. Bye y'all.